when there is a powerful movement like blockchain, Bitcoin and crypto, new waves discover it and have to learn through important and sometimes painful lessons what the early adopters have acquired previously. And on the other hand, the early adopters have to step up to their role of being the, the teachers and the tolerant, uh, welcoming uh, group so that the new adopters feel comfortable and can, in turn, adopt the same role maybe a few years later. It is always uh, important to understand that when a new technology starts, it is necessarily a niche. And actually, uh, it is something that would be impossible to be used and, and successfully employed by a larger group because they would not be available to go through the pain uh, and the, the process of debugging, of learning, uh, that the first group eagerly invests. On the other hand, as technology matures, it becomes easier and easier to use, and then it is the right time to make sure that a broader group can adopt it, can deploy it, can usefully understand its benefits. So specifically, this is what has happened in the world of Bitcoin and blockchain and cryptocurrencies in general uh, for the past 12 years. At the beginning, it was really just for geeks, maybe people who were already interested in monetary systems or in uh, cryptography, and uh, they were prepared mentally, but also they had the skills that were needed in order to understand the implications and to do the experiments uh, with the primitive tools available at the time. Today, we are in a completely different world. Easy platforms, apps on our phones, on the web, are available for practically anyone who uses a smartphone to also be active in the world of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. There is an important gap between the first group and this last group, last as of today. That gap is represented by the missionary zeal that the first feels. And the very pragmatic uh, approach of the second that doesn't necessarily look at what the long-term implications are. The early adopters must be tolerant towards these new waves of adopters. They have to be benevolent in welcoming them. They have to be patient in reaffirming and consolidating those values that they assumed were some of the most important ones as they started in their journey many years before. It is likely that there will be different interpretations. It is likely that some of these interpretations will be wrong. It doesn't matter. What matters is that the broadest possible community is able to execute in the development of the existing and the new applications that become available as ease of use, scalability, integration with existing platforms, the solution of certain important problems uh, is achieved. The waves of adoption in important technology movements uh, are 
characterizing cryptocurrencies and blockchain today as they have characterized, for example, the adoption of the internet previously. And new waves are coming. NFTs, non-fungible tokens, are not only about collecting digital art. The metaverse is not only about playing interactive 3D games that in some way integrate blockchain and represent digitally the loyalty uh, of players that are dedicated every day to uh, the platform. DeFi is not only about replicating the existing features of the banking system uh, on the blockchain. Uh, Each of these and the new applications that will be discovered for sure extend the abilities that we have and potentially benefit billions of people all over the world. There will be new waves and the newcomers will become the early adopters in the eyes of the next wave again. And I hope that tolerance and a welcoming culture will characterize each of these in order for the Bitcoin, blockchain and cryptocurrency world to be constructive and to be empowering people all around the world. Thank you very much for watching or listening to this episode of The Context. If you like it, you can become a fan, a supporter, a sponsor or benefactor on Patreon at patreon.com slash David Orban.